the traffic wanted to stop me from coming to DAS today. But you know, I was on my James Bond mindset. I made it. Cheers. <laughs> You're welcome to DAS. We're doing fine. I am Oluwa Shegun, <clears throat> your host. The Bitcoin market is fluctuating um, in fiat terms. We don't worry, you know, in Bitcoin Satoshi terms. But yeah, a lot, a lot of sell-offs. Weak hands are selling. I don't know why you guys are selling. Because we got to the top like 73, all-time high. You guys are just cashing out, right? It's okay. But it's an opportunity for new people to um, get into the space. So Bitcoin is on uh, Bonanza right now. By the deep, by the deep, by the deep. It's just that sometimes, you know, um, how much deep do you want to buy when the liquidity is no longer there? <laughs> It can be crazy. You're welcome to Digital Assets Show. Oluwa Shegun is your host. I take you on the ride, you know, all the time. I don't like to ish coin here. <laughs> but if you're doing anything in the blockchain space and it makes sense, especially if it's tied to Bitcoin, you know, DAS would definitely give you <clears throat> a platform for expression. So today I, I don't have any guests, but I just want a situation whereby myself and my viewers connect connect really like uh like you know i want to know if you guys are really learning anything from the show or if you have facts today i want to focus on frequently asked questions on bitcoin so that uh, you can call me yes and we can talk right uh share your bitcoin stories with me today you're free the lines are open the phone number should be on the screen right now uh, uh tell me about your bitcoin experience good or bad uh, whatever it is that uh, is your challenge in BTC or in the crypto space, you can ask me questions today. Uh, I, I'm feeling very generous, so I don't want to share my uh, my blessings with um, just my guest alone. I want to share it with my viewers. Do you understand me? So I'll be hoping that you guys give me a call. Does, does this mic fit like this? <laughs> I'll be hoping that you guys give me a call today. And uh, yes, we... We, um, you know, we, we get to learn from each other. Today, I plan to immerse you guys <clears throat> into proper Bitcoin education. I noticed I haven't done that on the show exclusively. I've been bringing different type of people to the show. Some of them, they claim to be Bitcoiners. I find out that they are shitcoiners. <laughs> Nigerians like to make money, you know, but uh, stay on Bitcoin, bro. Learn about BTC. Everything about the blockchain, you know, emanated from BTC. Right, Bitcoin, you know, when the first white paper, <clears throat> the main white paper, which is the first ever that came up before all of this um, altcoin buha in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto, it was, it was quite interesting, you know, and in 2009, we already have uh, Bitcoin, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Um, so please call me, ask me any question. Um, I want to demystify myths today. I want to lay emphasis on some facts about Bitcoin. So you can ask me basic, simple questions. Bit Bitcoin is actually very easy to understand. But, you know, because we have been entrenched, our life, uh, we are born into this fiat operation now world. So everything we think is fiat-based, right? We, we think in terms of inflation. We don't know that there is true hard money one day that would come and then show us that money can actually be disinflationary and money can be uh, money can be scarce for real and money can be uh, censorship resistant. You know, money is supposed to be you know fungible, divisible, and you should be able to carry your money anywhere. And in this internet age and time, you can see the world is preach, preaching cashless world, cashless Lagos, especially in Nigeria here. And, um, you know, carrying money around shouldn't be too obvious and suspicious. Money must be something that is private between yourself and you alone, you know. But in the fiat world now, money is, your money is not hidden. Everybody knows the amount of money that you have. You might think because it's on your app, it's only you. No, it's, it's not only you. This is not Ashake, only you. 
<laughs> Everybody sees it. Because if you go to one branch now today, bar, maybe you go to GT Bank, UBA, Zenit Bank, those are some of the banks that I really, really like, uh, and, uh, and, and FCMB and all these wonderful banks, right? And say you want to check your account balance. You give them your account number, you know, and they, they tell you account balance just like that. It, 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 I think we have a call. There's a caller on the line. I love that. Okay. Uh, uh, if you're on the Hello. line, uh, tell us your name and uh, where you're calling from. My name is Ka Ka Kazim. I'm calling from Castina. Woo! Kazim from Castina, the first ever caller on DAS. Ay -ay 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 -ay! <laughs> Oh, which gift I won't give you. You know, say that Bitcoin be the only money where I get. I don't get fiat. Uh -huh. Do you want me to send you some sats? Okay, 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 Kazim. All right, me, my producer, can you, can you pen down this? All right, Kazim, I'll do this for you. Because you're the first ever caller uh, today on DAS, you've just um, broken history and then uh, a record you have, has been made. So I promise you um, $10 worth of BTC. Um, yes, on the show. And I'm going to give you that. Now, this is, this is how I'm going to give you that. I'm not going to give you, so you're going to put it on any random shitcoin apps. <laughs> so look at this part, look, look at this sign. Um, very soon on the show, we're going to um, invite you over to come and uh, be a part of the launch. And uh, if you can make it to the Bitcoin halving on the 20th of April, that will be an opportunity for you to also meet, me, meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. I want to give you that Bitcoin for you. I can send it to you over TV, but I just want to uh, make you a special person. I'll give you that $10 Bitcoin, and hopefully you don't convert it to cash. Maybe sometime you tell us it has gotten to $100. Welcome, Kazim. Uh, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so, yeah, talk to me. Ask me the question. What do you want to know about Bitcoin? Just ask me anything. Uh, so, okay, let's say starter. You don't want to know how we can really get started on Bitcoin. If you want to get Bitcoin. So you need an you need the undiluted education. Yes, yes, right? yes, 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 yes. So yes. it's very good. This is the first step. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't advise you to just rush and go and buy Bitcoin like that. In as much as yes, we should buy Bitcoin and see where we we are going. To, our money is having hypertension because that's what is happening to the naira. Uh, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, as easy as the name is. It doesn't work the way naira dollar pounds work. Bitcoin is oh. everything that naira dollar pounds are not. One hundred million satoshis makes one Bitcoin, just like you have. Um, 60 Kobo, make one make naira. Make one naira. Oh, yes. Okay. 100 million Satoshis. Satoshis are the unit account of Bitcoin. Like Kobo is the unit account of naira. Cents is the unit account of dollars. Uh, pennies is the unit account of um, uh, 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 pounds. And, you know, Pesos in Ghana is the unit account of CDs. That's how Satoshis, Sats for short, called from the name of the uh, anonymous inventor of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, Satoshi or Sats, S-A-T-S for short. Uh, okay. on a hundred million of it makes one Bitcoin. If you never reach okay. 100 million, you never reach one Bitcoin. No. So if you want to buy okay. Bitcoin, these are the basic uh, education you need to learn first. And then you want to know how to buy Bitcoin, where to buy Bitcoin, how to spot scams, um, how to keep your Bitcoin safe. Actually, you can buy Bitcoin from a, a friend, a family friend. You can buy Bitcoin from... I, I, a peer-to-peer -peer market. Um, you can buy Bitcoin. If you come to the Bitcoin halving show, um, a meet-up, a very small gathering on the 20th oh. of April, we can give you that exclusive invite at zero cost. So I offset your ticket fee for you because you're my first caller. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm very glad you called. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I've been mean, watching your show since, since the first episode. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate that. Reach out to me on my Twitter uh, and, and let's have a let's have better conversation after that. Oh, I lost Kazim. That's wonderful. Okay. Somebody called. Oh, you're still there. So reach out to me on my Twitter at Mr. Lamy Lamy Coach. It might be on the screen too. Yes. Okay. Um, so if you want okay, to buy okay. Bitcoin, get Bitcoin education. You can buy Bitcoin from multiple platforms. Exchanges are there now, but those exchanges will have to KYC you. And you also want to be very sure that these exchanges... Um, you know, our, our license and they will secure your money. So if you're still there, I would like you to most likely reach out to me uh, and, and I can recommend one or two places. But you can buy Bitcoin 
anywhere all over the world, all over Nigeria, in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. Oh, he already left. Wonderful. Kazim, I will never forget that name. So please, my producer, remind me. We have $10 worth of BTC for Kazim. Fantastic um, um, uh, conversation between me and him there, all the way from Castina. So they watch us in Castina. I told you guys, 17 West African countries, I am not surprised at all. I love what is happening. On DSTV, is the first time. Give it up for Pop Central Bitcoin Education. Um, and, and definitely, we have VASP, right? A virtual asset service provider guidelines that is out now, which means that very soon they're going to start licensing Bitcoin companies and cryptocurrency companies, and they will operate like the banks are operating. This is a big time opportunity. Stay awake, understand it, so that some people don't sell Akpako to you, pseudo BTC. You understand? And then, and then you'll be like, oh my God, you get caught unawares, right? Yes. So Bitcoin is not paper money. Bitcoin is not government money. Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. It is online. You cannot touch Bitcoin. You may not be able to feel it, but you can see the impact of Bitcoin. Um, and Bitcoin operates in a network. So when you hear peer-to-peer -peer electronic system, it means that it's not Bitcoin doesn't operate in isolation. There is a network, right? I wrote some things down um, uh, overnight because I had a special session 7 a.m. this morning with uh, a new movement called the Nigeria, Bit Nigeria Women Bitcoiners. Yes, Nigeria Women Bitcoiners. Fantastic innovation, you know, uh, an idea that has been on my mind for a very long time. time. And I'm not a woman, I'm a man. Uh, but I know the impact of really learning BTC. And, and so now we have Nigeria women uh, who are prospective Bitcoiners trying to learn BTC. Because when women uh, learn about something, they can really uh, impact that knowledge, you know, to many more places. You know, women, are, uh, they are multipliers. They are producers. Unlike women, a man go, yeah, about Bitcoin, you know, go tell you. You could just keep the story, you could take and make money. I'm fine, my guy. What did he do now? If can just give you story and our trading <laughs> on our God, on our God. <laughs> so, you want to learn about Bitcoin because Naira is debasing. Our Naira is going down crazily. And, um, uh, yeah, what is Naira? What is dollar? What is paper money? Paper money that can tear, paper money that can burn. You understand? So, it's very, very important. Let me read out what I wrote down for you guys. Um, so uh, a, a lot of people ask me different questions, and I realize that the woman who sells Bolly on the corner of the roadside, the kind of frequently asked question is almost similar to the average man or woman who is trying to come up, or even the wealthy person who wants to get to the next level, right? So, um, so I put together um, frequently asked questions uh, to simplify what Bitcoin is. I'll read the first one to you guys. Um, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a decentralized network that allows anyone to take part in it. I've already told you guys that. Uh, it's a network, it's a system. Anybody can take part in BTC. Whether you are male or female, Bitcoin does not discriminate. Bitcoin does not uh, ask about your age. You understand? No age limits to, to have money. You feel me? So anybody can have Bitcoin. You can participate in the network. Uh, Bitcoin doesn't look at your skin color. You don't need a visa to be able to uh, travel and be a part of whatever it is that is happening in Bitcoin. It's, it, Bitcoin is a community of trust. Yes, and anybody can participate in it. It's not like, oh, you are not eligible. You don't, you don't have a uh, NEPA uh, bill. You don't have a particular certificate. You don't have a particular registration. You cannot open bank accounts. That does not happen in BTC. It's free, dumb money. BTC, Bitcoin, is for you and I. It provides, Bitcoin provides a secure way to store value over time and transfer that value to others without relying on third party. So Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic, electronic cash. No third party. We do not say peer to one peer to another peer. It might be peer to peer to peer, but there's no there's no middle man, unlike the traditional banking system. When you know uh, Desola sends money to Oluwa Shegun, 
or if I send money to you in the traditional banking system, there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> stoppers that does checks, right? So there is need for trust in that system. You need to trust the third party to ensure that that money moves. And usually the money doesn't move that day. You know, they settle the money uh, sometime later. It's usually like I owe you. So when I send money to you, uh, usually in a like breeze, they move that period. We'll get to, into that some other time. What is money and how money moves and all of that, you know, especially how uh, banking transactions happen. But no, let's focus on Bitcoin so we don't get distracted. So if I'm sending money from here to you now in the traditional um, finance space, a lot of checks it will go through before it eventually reflects in your account. But sometimes you see it very quickly, but a lot of people have seen that transaction. There's no privacy there. But in Bitcoin, there is a uh, huge pri privacy. It is strictly from me to you, right? <laughs> because I have my private key, and then you have your private key, and then you have your public key. I have my public key. Your public key is like your bank account, you understand? For example, but it's very private because you are the only one that know the transaction inside a bank account and that it belongs to you. Unlike in fiat terms, where the accountants actually know the, the, the account balance by just giving the um, um, accountant your account number. So the privacy level in Bitcoin and fiat is completely incomparable. Bitcoin's privacy is like this, fiat privacy is like this. Uh, I round up by saying um, uh, Bitcoin has a fixed and transparent inflation schedule that cannot be manipulated and will essentially, no, that cannot be manipulated at will. Uh, and essentially, it serves as a digital cash for the internet. So there are only 21 million Bitcoins. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoins. Yes, 100 million Satoshis in 21 million places. It's not like Naira dollar pounds that somebody can print and print and print too much of it, and then you have to work so hard like this before you get a little of it. And then goods and services are very small. And then the money is so much in the environment, in the nation, in, in circulation, very little goods and services. Inflation will definitely occur. You know, <laughs> people will start to increase the prices of things. And your money don't have value because they keep printing over there. And you once you're working or, or, or to get, it's just like this. So nothing can make that money have value as much. But Bitcoin is just 21 million. 8 billion people on Earth, 21 million Bitcoin. Everybody cannot have one, bit, one Bitcoin. It's scarce. Makes sense, right? So stick with me. I'll go on a break. When I come back, uh, more Bitcoin education. Yes, we're back. Um, it's the Digital Assets Show. If you want undiluted cryptocurrency education anywhere all over Africa, especially the 17 West African countries that pop central on DSTV airs, or if you want to watch Bitcoin one hour or cryptocurrency one hour exclusive in the entire Africa, you can only watch that on channel 189 on the biggest satellite TV platform, DSTV pop central. Woo woo. <laughs> Pop Central, Pop Central did for forward. Others are envy. They are envying. You know, no reach. Because we're discussing Bitcoin here. If you guys are serious about this, then you guys are going to come and reach out to Pop Central. They will syndicate to you guys. Um, and this is very, very interesting. This is like the actions that happened to BTC way back in 2011 when the likes of Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, he wrote Mastering Bitcoin. Go and check that out online. Andreas Antonopoulos, one of the earliest Bitcoiners, he wrote the book Mastering uh, Bitcoin. And um, it was educating people in the big hall that should be ordinarily like a thousand sitters. Just about maybe like seven people were in the hall and two were living. Uh, one day I'll bring the video so we can all watch it. So Bitcoin education sometimes can be boring which is the thing they have used to jinx Nigerians and Africans. If they don't want you to make money, you will never like money shows. You will like, you know, TikTok fun more than a money show. So please do not miss the Internet Money Podcast anytime again. When we come up life like this, get your notepad, get your um, family members, get your monetary mindset ready and watch DAS. It's informative, it's educating, it's exciting. It's about your monetary future. Because, you know, if you tell me, say, inflation, I know they mess you up right now. 
Won your jeans, tin won, Gary, tin won. Yes, it's true. Everything is expensive. How much is bottled water now? Do you even still drink bottled water in your house? Okay, if you do, how much is that's good for you? And how much do you buy a carton of bottled water? 12, 24, how much is a, a, a bag of pure water now? Things are so expensive. How much is a liter of fuel? And has your salary increased? Ask yourself that question. What has increased about your income? So the entire... Nigerian system is inflationary. But when you save all of your energy, your hard work, your money in hard money, money that cannot be debased, censored, money that cannot be controlled by any government, there's nothing Nigerian government can do about Bitcoin. No. Is that they allow Bitcoin or, or Naira, Naira just continue to dindo? Because Naira is backed by the dollar. Yes. If the USA don't print dollar, there's nothing that will happen to the worth of your Naira, which is why countries are trying to really go off that US dollar back in train forever and, and you know, hop onto BRICS. BRICS is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. I hear that they've launched a new um, currency, but I don't have the facts. When I have the facts, I'll share with you guys. The dollar is the most popular reserve currency in the world. So if your money... Um, does not have value, check what the value of the money is against the US dollar. What is the value of Naira to the dollar today? If you want to buy just one dollar, how, how much did it cost 10 years ago? How much does it cost now? How much is your salary worth in Naira? How much is all of that hard earning worth in dollar? Where do you save your money? Me, I tell Lina from my own experience. My experience, I've been hurt several times saving my money in in the banks, and, and the banks know this, right? What percentage has any bank given to me before as thank you for saving your money that will beat inflation with, between or within that period that they give me or they gift me that percentage incentive for keeping my money there? Whereas the bank don't even leave the money there. They invest the money. They borrow it out because they know the money is worth nothing. It's paper money. It does not even breathe. But Bitcoin breathes, right? In fiat terms. And when you buy Bitcoin, you buy some binary numbers that can never be deducted. Nobody will remove anything from your Bitcoin. Bitcoin don't close. There's no Saturday, there's no Sunday, there's no holiday, four o'clock bankers close. That's the, that does not happen in BTC. You can move your Bitcoin anytime, any day. And when you save your money in Bitcoin, you are storing that your energy. Bam! Let me talk to you guys. See the secret. This is why you should buy Bitcoin. When you earn money, you have, for example, 100,000 Naira that you don't want to lose. Any money that you don't want to let go or you don't want to invest into material things that loses value, you put that money in Bitcoin. Any money that you can afford to lose, put it in other cryptocurrencies. If you want to protect your savings. Put it in Bitcoin. And I'm going to throw a shot now, but unfortunately, I, I, it's not really like a shot. A lot of people put money in Piggy Vest, right? Shout out to the innovation of Piggy Vest. But guess what? What's the percentage increase that Piggy Vest will ordinarily give you if you keep your money there for like one year? Max, maybe they do 10%. If you're lucky, 15%. I don't know if they give 20% to. But on 100,000 Naira savings, when you put your money in Piggy Vest, say you save it there for four years. Four years, one halving of BTC would have happened. And that's when Bitcoin miners' reward gets cut in half and the subsidy, you know, uh, gets reduced into half. Like right now, it's 6.25. By April 20th, Bitcoin halving, it would have been 3.125. Bitcoin becomes scarcer. It becomes more valuable. You know what happens? <laughs> the value of Bitcoin goes up. But that money that you save in Piggy vest, right? Maybe they give you 10, 15, 20%. What will that value be at the end of the year for saving, of saving? In the real world market, say you want to buy a laptop. Laptop now, say like 300,000 Naira in January. By December, when you're supposed to collect that savings, when you want to withdraw that savings, will that laptop be waiting for you in Nigeria? Tell yourself the truth. Computer Village in Lagos, Ikeja, or anywhere you want to buy the laptop, will it be waiting for you at that same one million era? Does the price of anything in Nigeria go down? That laptop would have gone maybe 1.2 million, 1.3 million era. And Piggy Vest will give you a small percent. What's the percentage 
what's, what's 10%, 15%, 20% on 1 million naira? Will he still be able to buy that laptop? Meanwhile, the person will keep money for Bitcoin. I store the value of that 1 million naira, and most likely at the end of the year, I've done maybe like 100% of that money. The longer you keep your money in Bitcoin, the better for you. You don't want to be saving money and then be removing the money to solve problems. You want to actually save money so that it can protect your future because if you want to get wealthy. If you save money in the Nigerian bank for four years and I save money in Bitcoin for four years, who do you think would have the most rest of mind? Aha, I know you're thinking, ah, Bitcoin is volatile. It goes up and come down. No, 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 no. That's a myth. I debunk it to the national television. Bitcoin does not go up and down. When you buy Bitcoin, you know, it's a hundred million satoshis, like I said. Don't forget, like 60 cover is to Naira. That's how a hundred million satoshis is to Bitcoin. Sats for short are the unit of account of Bitcoin. So you will buy something. You don't necessarily have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy Bitcoin small, small. You can buy 10,000 Naira worth of BTC, which is going to be in Sats because it's not up to 100 million. It's not one Bitcoin yet. It is going to be in Satoshi. So whatever it is that you buy in Satoshi's, so you buy maybe 10,000 worth of Satoshis. That should be about, uh, it should be less than $20, right? Ah, huh? oh, wow. Hmm. That same Bitcoin that was less than $1 before. For one Bitcoin, 100 million. Now, to get $1 of BTC, you would need like over... 1,000 Satoshis, close to 2,000 Satoshis, the unit of account of Bitcoin. It's crazy. This thing, you should just go to your paper money and carry everything. Don't go and tear it or burn it. You know, go and just buy Bitcoin right now because there is no way you can escape it. The inflation month on month will eat you up so crazily that by the time you want to go and withdraw that money, you cannot do that thing you want to do again. You'll not be able to buy that laptop again. Think about it. Tell yourself the truth. So call me. Let's talk. You know, I don't want to be giving you jargons. I wrote a lot of beautiful things here, but you, the, some of the words might be ambiguous to people that have never, you know, really heard them before. But I simplified it. I have frequently asked questions here, like I said. So call me, ask me any question. I, I'm in a good mood. I want to start interacting with my, uh, my, my listeners. So anything that is worrying your mind about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin on top of the food chain, ask me. I will tell you what is true, what is a lie, Right here, we will bust that scam. Ask me any question. I did can't be. Aha. <laughs> okay, so why is Bitcoin important? Have you thought about that? Uh, the ability for Bitcoin to cryptographically, in a secure and censorship resistant way, move money around borders makes it very special. Yes. You know, unlike paper money, right? You know paper money, fiat, naira pounds, that before you move money, eh, <laughs> you need to go through MasterCard, Visa, and, and then if they are not in that jurisdiction, you can't even take money there. They can't even transfer money there. There are some countries that are, are under the sanction of the United States of America or under the sanction of whatever country. Money can't get there. So they have been censored. That does not happen in BTC. With Bitcoin, you can never experience government clampdown of your money. If the Nigerian government does not like your opinion today, they will naturally just say, ah, we don't like what that guy is saying. You know. Please, can you just block his transactions? Yes. Sometimes I'm trying to make payments on bank apps, and then the, the network is terrible. And then no, no tangible excuse. They may not even know until people would have been hurt. Somebody in the, in the hospital can't even pay for hospital bill. Somebody who bought food already, I've started eating the meal, will not be able to live there. You know, if you're in distress, you'll not be able to sort out that stuff because there is a technology failure, human error in the bank. But that does not happen in Bitcoin. It's open source. And they won't even tell you what the problem is in the bank on time. You, you, you are not there. Bitcoin is an open source technology. You, we can all see whatever it is that is happening. Only 21 million Bitcoins will ever exist. Like I said, that is why it is important. That is why it is very, very important. Nobody can stop Bitcoin from going to Ghana 
Angola, South Africa, Uzbekistan, Canada, Morocco, and back, USA, London, to Ibadan, to Lekki Phase 1 here, and straight to Australia. Nobody can stop the transaction. Not government. So it's better for government to just, you know, endorse Bitcoin and let it start to boom our economy. Maybe if Nigerian government have invested in Bitcoin for some time now, we would have known where we are. For example, look at El Salvador in South America. Go and read about what El Salvador has done with BTC. They have legalized Bitcoin as a legal tender in their country. A young president, like you and I, you know? Gen Z, as we wake up tomorrow and they will not spend paper money no more because it's really, it's really very stressful. Some of us don't even like dirty money, you know? We like the money when it is fresh. You understand? No matter how little it is, we like it when it's fresh. So in BTC, your money can never get dirty. And your money is your money. It will always have value. So if you think about it, the importance of Bitcoin is the fact that, consequently, it can never be tampered by the government. It can't be tampered with by the government. You, you cannot control my Bitcoin. So uh, that's true financial freedom. How can financial freedom be dependent on customer service? If you tweet at customer service, they will not answer you. If you send a message, they don't answer you. At night, they don't even sleep. Bitcoin has no customer service, has no particular office. There are no marketing teams, no executive members. It's an open source technology. Ask me questions. I will answer you. Call me right now. Freedom money for the first time. So how does Bitcoin work, actually? I know you might be thinking, how does Bitcoin work? Uh, it doesn't work in mysterious ways. It works in a very, very simple way, right? So let's say I want to send money to you now, right? All of the hosts want to send money to you, the viewer. What I do is I, I let the network know that I want to send money, right? And, and that is... That information is broadcasted to everybody that is in the network, everybody that secures the network. Know that, oh, the host of gas wants to send money to the viewer. And they verify if that information is correct. So there are miners, that people called miners, the ones that perform a particular mathematical um, um, solution. And, and then when they get the answer, they get rewarded for getting the answer, for verifying that this is a transaction and they store it in the blockchain. So that blockchain itself is a bulk of multiple transactions. So when I'm sending money to you, they see the fact that the transaction is coming. Everybody attests to it that it's a sincere transaction and the miners confirm it. They add that transaction to the block. Now that same process is repeated for everybody and it becomes a long chain of trust that cannot be adulterated, cannot be erased. You cannot remove anything from it again. It's not like, ah, that transaction was an error. They will uh, charge back. Mm -mm. That happens in fiat money. It does not happen in Bitcoin. That's why some people say, once you don't send Bitcoin, OT what? Law. But guess what? You also have to be very, very careful in Bitcoin transactions. You know, it doesn't mean that you can't find your Bitcoin again because honest processes, if you send Bitcoin to the wrong address, if uh, it's a KYC platform, which means if it's, if, if it's a know your customer platform under a regulated environment, then of course you can reach out and customer service can help you. Now this is why you cannot completely rule out government when it comes to allowing the decentralized cryptocurrency uh, industry boom in Nigeria. Um, and on that note, I would like to leave it right there. I hope I've passed out some information. There are other things I would like to discuss with you, like letting you understand what the blockchain is, exploring what Bitcoin mining is. Is it possible to, for government to steal your Bitcoin or hold your Bitcoin or censor your Bitcoin? Can Bitcoin be utilized by criminals? Yeah, all monies can be utilized by criminals, especially Naira dollar pounds. <laughs> There's some money in Ikoi the other day, Abby. They don't see Bitcoin for Ikoi before. <laughs> All right, I hope you learned one or two things that Bitcoin is freedom money and um, uh, the best savings technology ever that exists in our time is Bitcoin. 
best performing assets in the world for the last 10 years. Not real estate, not S&P 500, not NASDAQ, not Nigerian stock exchange. Nothing has done better than Bitcoin in the last 10 years. So think about this. Pay attention, do your research, read about BTC, and I'll see you same time next week. Pop Centra, thank you very much. Thank you to my producer. Thank you to everybody behind the camera. And for you guys at home, thank you to Kazim who called me today. Uh, I promised you $10 worth of BTC. Please reach out to me. I'm a man of my word. I'm a man of my word. I'll keep you like that, okay? And uh, we invite you for the Bitcoin halving gathering. It's a small gathering on the 20th of April. We hope you make it. I remain your host, Uluwa Shegun. Aha, and uh, I'll see you same time, same station next time.